फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू आवर चैनल लर्न विद गिग्स इन दिस वीडियो आई विल डिस्कस विद यू नाइन इंटरव्यू क्वेश्चंस व्हिच वर रिसेंटली आस्ट इन द पावर बी इंटरव्यू एट वॉलमार्ट यू नो वॉलमार्ट इज अ बिग प्रोडक्ट बेस्ड कंपनी वन ऑफ माय कनेक्शंस ऑन लिंक्डइन सेंट मी दोस क्वेश्चंस एंड शी रिक्वेस्टेड अ वीडियो ऑन दैट सो नाउ आई एम मेकिंग अ वीडियो ऑन इट सो दैट यू ऑल कैन सी दोस क्वेश्चंस एंड लर्न हाउ टू आंसर देम इन द इंटरव्यू and friends if you want to learn the data analyst skills which includes power bi sql excel and python then i would recommend you to go for code basics data analyst boot camp 2.0 and you can become an ai enabled data analyst this boot camp is very affordable it costs rupees 6300 and at the same time the quality of the content is very good that i can assure you of these are the things that you will be learning in the boot camp first you will start with excel then power bi then sql then python and parallelly you will be taught about online credibility how online presence is important nowadays in the market they will guide you in resume preparation they will provide strategies to apply for the jobs in different companies they will help in interview preparation and they will also provide a virtual internship which which you can include in your resume too at the end after 4 months of hard work you will be job ready in the market so this is a brilliant boot camp to go for for a very affordable price i will provide the link of this boot camp in the description box of this video please do check it out so here is the mail that i got from sonali jain one of my linkedin connections and you can say it's a walmart interview questions and here is the list of those questions so we will discuss the highlighted ones one by one because those are the tricky ones and you should know how to answer them so the first question is what is the most critical challenge you have faced till now while working on the project how to answer this question so before any kind of power bi interview you should know and mentally prepare about this particular question this will be definitely asked and how to answer this if you have really faced any kind of challenge in your project then you can tell about it if not if you are transitioning your career if you are a fresher or if you if you don't if you are not aware about any kind of that challenge then what you can do you should talk about data modeling or you should talk about some dax based problem so data modeling means something related to granularity level that means how difficult it was to to make the relationship between different tables in that model so the data granularity level in data modeling is the most challenging part that you can discuss or you can discuss about dax based situation based problem which you can take up from one of my videos only from youtube i hope it is clear to you now the next question is how will you join two tables with the help of dax function so this is very tricky question because whenever we join two tables we usually do it using power query in power query basically because we have their merge functionality with the help of which we join the tables but the interviewer asked to do it with the help of dax function yes there are two functions dax functions available for joining purpose that is what you can tell about first is natural let me show that also so this is natural inner join which is basically inner join which you learn in sql and you can see the syntax also left table and right table simply two tables and the inner, natural inner join so this is one of the way to join two tables using dax functions and the other one is natural left outer join that means left join in sql now the next question is how will you optimize the dax code like what will be the checkpoints the interviewer want to ask like apart from general optimization and tech techniques what else will you do to optimize your dax code so here you should talk about two main things and whatever i am telling you in this video listen it very carefully watch the video completely till the end without skipping any part because that's how you have to answer the questions in the interview otherwise you might get rejected so we were talking about the optimization techniques so whenever your dax code is huge in size so it is quite possible that many of the calculation is repetitive many of the dax a part of dax code is repetitive so what you can do you can make use of variables you can you can store the calculation in one variable and then you can utilize that particular variable at all other instances wherever it is required in that particular dax code so this is one of the ways the second one is you will grab the dax query and then you will go to dax studio right which you can find it over here you see in the external tools you have dax studio and then you can see what is the formula engine value that means how much time is taken by formula engine and storage engine while executing that particular dax code you might have not heard about these two terms you can you can you can read about this formula engine and storage engine that you can see on the screen so it will tell you that formula engine is taking 7 millisecond exam for example storage engine is taking 2289 millisecond so overall 2296 millisecond is taken by that particular dax code now what you can do for example i will give you one another example so for example your dax code is this okay 
calculate total orders all products Sim very simple short dax code just for just to explain you i'm telling this what you do you you took this dax code you went to dax studio and you saw the value of storage engine and formula engine how much time they are taking to reduce the formula engine and storage engine time you need to use another equivalent function that can be utilized over here to get the same result for example you see here i have used all function all dax function to calculate this total orders now what i can do instead of all i can write remove filters also here because remove filters can also be utilized in this particular use case and let's see what does the result come out to be you will see again the result came out to be 84000 earlier using all also it was 84000 now using remove filters also it is 84000 you are getting the same result but using utilizing different dax function so in this way you have to do some hit and trial and you have to utilize some equivalent functions and see if using those functions timing is reduced or not if it is reduced that means that you have got the optimized dax function for that particular dax code so this is how you should answer this particular question now let's move towards the next question how will you refresh single table in power bi again a very tricky question you have to tell it are you asking about power bi desktop or are you asking about power bi service if it is about power bi desktop then it is very simple you will just just go to the table right click and refresh data that means your one particular table got refreshed but if the interviewer says no we are talking about power bi service that means already a report is created already a model is published that means everything is published to power bi service now out of that particular model suppose 10 tables are there in that model i want to refresh only one particular table then what is that way so to answer this question you should know about some things basically some terminologies like xml endpoint if you would have heard about this term xml endpoint to refresh that table first of all your report should be published in a premium workspace or premium per user workspace that so that is the first condition that you should say next one is you have to grab the xml endpoint from power bi service of that model then you have to go to an open ssms that is sql server management studio you can see on the screen also this is microsoft sql server management studio so this is ssms now you have to click on connect and choose analysis services and then you have to paste that xml endpoint that you have grabbed from power bi service once you enter it your model will appear in ssms and then it will show you all the tables also in front of you and now what you can do to refresh one particular table just go to that particular table right click and click on process table and then do the full processing of table your one particular table got refreshed and you can just go to power bi service again and just refresh the browser and you will see the updated data whatever i have spoken just listen it on loop you will understand what i am trying to say just visualize what i am trying to say and you will understand the answer how you have to explain it in front of the interviewer i hope it is clear to you now it is very important question now let's move to the next question that is what will you prefer a slicer or a filter like according to you which is good to use again a tricky question let me know in the comment box what you will prefer slicer or filter now i'm telling my answer what i will say i will say i will prefer slicer over filter why because in filter if you will if you have already applied filters and when you open any report report rendering becomes slow because it has to apply the filters that you have already applied right so report rendering will be slow but if you have given a slicer instead of a filter then it will open normally and report rendering will be fast so that is one advantage of using a slicer instead of filter the another plus point is that you can control the filtering using a slicer using edit interaction option in power bi right you know that if there is a slicer for example this is a product key here and i have made it to slicer over here so if i go to the format section you have this option of edit interaction so that means using edit interaction you can control the filtering of that of this particular slicer with respect to other visuals of which are also present on this particular page of the report so these two main points you can mention in front of the interviewer now the next question is you want to give permission to 50 users in power bi how will you do that so this is a question of power bi service so if you have a situation like this then what you can do you can create a ad group that is azure active directory group group include those 50 users in the ad group then what you can do while publishing the report you can utilize update app feature in power bi service and using update app in update app you just select the report that you want to share and also select the ad group that you created for those 50 users and just click on share button grab the link of the report 
and send it across all those 50 people and they will be easily seeing the report so in this way we can easily give the permission i hope it is clear to you now and whatever is not clear to you listen it in loop you will understand what i am trying to say and visualize it in your mind now the next question is suppose someone with contributor role who is not a part of your team can a can able to view the da data and dashboard if yes what should be done so if somebody out of your team has contributor level access in your workspace and is able to view the data and everything else what will be the immediate step that you will do so first of all you will inform this to your immediate team lead and then if you have member level access you can directly revoke that person access in power bi service and remove that person's role completely from there so only thing is that you should have member level access or you are a power bi admin level access or you have a power bi admin level access i hope this is also clear to you now now the next question is you have data from different data sources like one is from google sheet other is from sql server and other is from previous pro project like data set what will be the approach to bring in power bi desktop so you should know this if any data so if we are using any database and that is in direct query mode in that case we can't utilize any other data sources so first of all you have to mention this point and if we are using a sql server database database in import mode then yes we can utilize and include google sheet also and any other data source also along with it in power bi desktop for sql server again you just have to click on get data and choose sql server write the credential and and pull that required tables google sheet again you can utilize get data and go to web and write the credential and connect with the google sheet so so whenever the database is in import mode then obviously other other things also we can connect and we can manage that in power query in power bi so that is how you have to answer this question and friends if you are loving the content on this channel then do hit the like button of this video it is completely free for you and your one like will give me the motivation to create more videos like this okay now let's move towards the next question that is what is import mode and direct query connectivity mode and which one is better so again he all, he asked the difference between those two modes and, and at the last he asked which one is better so how to answer this particular question so difference is simply import mode is when when you are pulling the data and storing it locally in your machine that is import mode and when it is direct query that means you are not storing the data locally you are just pulling the data on every interaction directly from the source so this is the di basic difference between import mode and direct query now which one is better it depends you have to say it depends upon the requirement of the report for example if the client wants to see the real time data that means the refresh value of the data source is a lot in that case we have to go for a direct query report or if the data set size is very very huge in that case also we will prefer direct query connectivity but again there is a disadvantage of using direct query also because we are limited we can't use all the dax functions so definitely calculation of kpis will become difficult right and which is not the case in import mode in import mode you can utilize all the dax functions you can include other sources also along with the import mode connectivity connectivity and if you have a huge data side you can also util utilize features like incremental refresh and all right or you can group the data wherever it is required so depending on the requirement depending on the impact we will decide whether we have to go for import mode or whether we should go for direct query connectivity mode so i have discussed the questions which were highlighted by the person you can also see the other questions also which are not highlighted these are also asked in the interview so you can also see those things and also prepare accordingly so thank you for watching this video completed till the end share the video to all your friends and colleagues whoever are in need of this